So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created the Jannah, the paradise, and the hellfire, he sent Jibreel alayhi salam to see both of them because hellfire, Jahannam, and the paradise, the Jannah, are created. Allah created them already. So he sent Jibreel to have a look. And Jibreel came back and he said, Oh Allah, anyone hears of the Jannah will go for the Jannah. Anyone hears of the hellfire will avoid it. Allah sent him for the second time. He sent him again. He said, now go and have a look. And Jibreel alayhi salam, he found that the hellfire was surrounded with desires, lusts. And the Jannah surrounded with hardships, difficulties. So if you want to go to the hellfire, you just follow your own desire. That is the easy way. Follow your own desire, you will land in Jahannam. You will land in the blazing fire forever. If you want the Jannah, Jannah is not easy. If you want to go to heaven, if you want to go to paradise, it is surrounded with hardships, trials, difficulties. So the Hawa indeed is the fence of the hellfire. So whoever follows his Hawa will land in the blazing fire. Also, among the tips that inshallah will help us to get rid of this disease, that following the Hawa leads to, a'udhu billah, to the ridda, apostasy. What is ridda? Apostasy. Is a, when you reject and you leave the iman, and you leave the fault of Islam, and apostasy not only in Islam, it is there even in the previous, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, it is stated that if someone apostated, if someone leaves the religion, the Bible says, don't spare him. Don't spare his life. Kill him. Because that is a treason to come out of the religion. So if you follow your own desire, this will lead to the apostasy. So those people who sometimes say, well, I don't want Islam anymore. We tell them, listen, you cannot leave Islam. Because... In the first place, we didn't force you to become a Muslim. Take your time. Islam is not a joke. Once you become a Muslim, that's it. You cannot leave Islam. Before that, you have the choice. You have your freedom. Study Islam. Because Islam is the religion of all the prophets and the only true way. So you cannot, it's not just like anything. You can today do this and tomorrow you say, no, no, I didn't like Islam. So that is what we call apostasy, ridda. So if you follow your desires, this leads to that. May Allah save us all. Also among the tips, it is one of the destroyers. What do you mean by the destroyers? The destroyers as major sins. Major sins in Islam, or sins by the way, for the benefit of our dear listeners and watchers, viewers, sins in Islam, are classified into two main categories major sins and minor sins so the major sins are called destroyers because they will destroy you because they lead to the hellfire and no doubt a person who will be landing who will be thrown into the blazing fire he will be destroyed he will be ruined so that is also, so keeping this in mind will help you, inshallah, to get rid of following the desire. Also bearing in mind, when you disobey your own hawa, disobeying your own nafs, this will strengthen your iman. Disobeying the hawa strengthens the iman in your heart. Because you feel, my nafs, my desire tells me to do this. No, I resist, I restrain. I try to hold myself. So this means the iman, the belief will be strengthened and that's why you are able to overcome your own hawa. So keeping that in mind, this also will help you inshallah to overcome your desire. Also the most respectful people are the ones who follow not their hawa. In any community, in any community people, they respect the people who are just the people who are impartial, 
the people who are objective, the people who don't follow their own desires, the people who follow the principles, the people who follow the truth, people, they respect them. Say, this is a man of principle. This is a man who respects his words. This is the man who doesn't follow his own whims and desires. So if you want to be respected, get rid of following your own nafs and your own desire. Also among the tips that you should have this constant struggle between the intellect and the desire. Because who wins rules? Because you have this inner struggle inside you. Your mind tells you, no, it is bad. Yes, I know. Do you think the alcoholic, they know? They don't know that uh, the liquor is bad? They know. Their intellect, their mind tells them, this is harmful. You are destroying yourself. This is bad for you. That's what the intellect, that's what the mind says. But then the hawa comes in and the desire. So he feels weak. Now there is a struggle between these two enemies. The desire and the intellect. The mind says, no, it is wrong. But the desire, so he feels weak. So he gives up and surrender to the desire. So these two forces, whichever wins, rules. If the intellect wins, it rules. If the desire wins, it rules. So we have to take care of that. Also among the tips, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them beneficial for all of us, that the truth is the opposite of the hawa. The haq is always opposite of the hawa. That's why we say al haq mur in Arabic. Truth is bitter. People, they don't like to hear the truth. No. People, they like you to compliment them. People, they like you to tell them you are okay, you are fine, everything is sweet, fine. But the moment you are a straightforward person telling the people the truth, people, they don't like it. Because the truth is bitter. No one likes the truth. Because the truth goes against the hawa. The truth goes against the, the nafs. So that's why those people who are straightforward, they suffer a lot. People, they don't like them. Because this man, he, is, he will not compromise. He will not try to be a diplomatic with you. No, he tells you immediately. No, this is wrong. That's it. Accept it, reject it, it's up to you. So that's why people, they don't like to hear the truth. Because it goes against the nafs. It goes against the hawa. People, they like if someone compliment someone when he is asked, he will try to, you know, beat around the bush. He will not be straight with you. So, so the truth is the opposite of the hawa. That's why people, they hate to hear the truth. Also, among the tips, inshallah, that following the hawa is a disease. And if you have a disease, what should you do? You have to get rid of that disease. You have to uproot it. You have to eradicate it. You have to seek medication. So this disease, you have to work on and try to get rid of it. How you get rid of it? He is the one. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you to overcome this desire and get rid of this disease. May Allah azza wa jal help all of us to get rid of this sickness. Amen. Also among the tips, my dear brothers and sisters, that striving against one's hawa, one's evil inclination, is the most difficult to strive. It is the most difficult to strive indeed. Very difficult. Very difficult. Because you are struggling against your nafs. And there are many forces. You have the nafs, you have the shaitan, you have other external factors try to, to affect you. So this is struggle against, that's why jihad and nafs is the most difficult. Very difficult. Sometimes you might be able to do many things, many of the rituals, many of the ibadah. You have no problem with salah. You have no problem with the siyam. But a particular thing you cannot. For instance, women for the young men. So that is a weakness. So now to resist this temptation and try to overcome that, it's not easy. But you have to work hard on it. 